Well, hey, let's cut to Sunbum's segment. Trust in us. People need advice from us. And so we are going to provide that for them. Trust! Trust in us! And David Scales and Jack Spins will give us advice if you can trust. Speaking of a raging guitar solo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you for that, DJ, DJ Seaweed. Seaweed. Trust in us is brought to you by Sun Bum. Um, tr- l- listeners trust in us, but we, Chaz and I, put our trust in the bum. Sunbum.com. Summer's coming, David Lee Scales. Summer's coming with its theoretical sun here in Southern California. <laughs> and ooh, we, it's going to be, I mean, after this, especially after this winter, where we have only seen rain clouds here in the Southland for six months we're all pale white we're gonna burn like that once the sun comes out so everybody should think about that truly think about you've been indoors hiding from the rain for six months you should all go to sunbum.com and enter the code what is the code surf splendor surf splendor save 15 percent and get because you're going to be going through that stuff especially the first couple months you're going to be slathering like you've never slathered before Totally. And um, you mentioned the sun theoretically might come out, but even if it doesn't come out, those UV rays cut through the clouds. And that's really what you want to watch out for. Yeah. So obviously you look for broad spectrum um, protection, UVA and UVB, and uh, that'll keep you covered. And by the way, next month, Skin Cancer Awareness Month in May. I mean... You're a survivor. I am. I've, I'm a survivor. I am. I need to run in a 5k. I think at this point you do a survivor 5k. You need to for solidarity and awareness campaign. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, I have, uh, speaking of, uh, skin cancer awareness, I have something on my face. I just made an appointment two days ago to go to the dermatologist and check it out. I have a giant thing on my leg that I've been <laughs> just looking at for a while thinking, mm, I'm going to, I'm going to follow you. Perfect. This is the perfect, this is the advice we want to give to people because skin cancer is actually, uh, it's deadly, but dying of skin cancer is totally preventable. There's a lot of, there's a lot of cancers that, um, are not necessarily detectable or preventable. This is preventable by detection. And so one of the things you want to look for is things that change. So getting to know your body and then understanding when something changes. And that's where I have this on my face. I'm like, gosh, I've got a little scab here from something. Oh, well, whatever. Three days went by and I'm like, that scab is still there. Like, why hasn't it sloughed off, you know, or whatever. And uh, it's like, well, turns out it's probably not a scab. And it looks like a mole, but it feels like a scab. And that's probably not a good thing. So we'll just go to the dermatologist, have them check it out. They can zap it off at this stage. No big deal. I'm not actually worried about it. But identifying it is key. Because not identifying it and going a year or two, then having to have like a crater cut out of your face is not cool. Not cool. Not cool. So sunbum.com, their advice, by the way, on their website is like, hey, stay out of the sun. (laughs) But if you're going to go in the sun, use sunbum. You know what I mean? So I think that's great advice too. Um, We're obviously in the sun via surfing no matter what. So sunbum.com, promo code SurfSplendor, 15% off or buy from your local retailer. Now, advice, trust in us. Chaz, this is a listener line call. Uh, call for the grit. Uh, I need a little bit of a life advice here. Currently, I'm living in a small beach town on the east coast of America, recent college graduate, and I had the opportunity to go take a job in one of these big cities on the east coast and make a lot more money, but I have recently chosen to take a significant pay reduction and still work in my local little beach town. Um, The decision for this is honestly just to surf. So family, kind of mad, but let me know if I made the right choice or not. If my career took me to a big city where I'd have to step away from surfing, but I'd make a lot more money or if I should still work in this little small town that I'm in. Kind of, Kind of need some help on this one, boys. Thank you. Picking lower pay. We're here, David Lee. We're here for our friend. 
This one is relatively simple. It might seem complex, but I think this one, the fact that he was not tempted by the pay mm. and didn't try to justify by thinking like, okay, I'm going to go get paid for a while and then I'm going to save my money and then buy a condo in, you know, some, the beach town. And then also, uh, you know, whatever, whatever there, there's all kinds of scenarios that you can dream up in your mind when you're chasing pay, which are fine, right? Like, Hey, if you want to get paid more money, you want to get paid more money, but our fine caller recent college graduate seems like he's got his priorities sorted the way he wants them. And if you have your priorities sorted the way you want them, if you enjoy that beach town life, if you enjoy surfing all that, you know, as, as much as you can, perfect. You like all you're going to do. I mean, again, I think we brought this up before David Lee scales in the show, but who was it? Was it Jerry Jones who said, uh, owner of the Dallas Cowboys, owner of some professional sports team. I think it was Jerry Jones said, People out, you know, Cowboys are worth whatever. I mean, the Washington Commanders just sold for $7 billion. So if they sold for $7 billion, then I'm sure the Dallas Cowboys would sell for $13 billion, some insane amount of money. And so Jerry Jones has asked, why don't you sell, you know, the Cowboys? And he says, because the only thing I would want to do with my money is buy the Cowboys, uh, which is precisely to our fine collars point. If you were living the life you want, then... All you're going to do with more money is try to get back to living the life you want. And you're just going to, you're going to go a real roundabout way to, to attempt to get back. So money and everything, if you're happy, be happy. Yes. But <laughs> when you're in college and maybe even just out of college, you don't have a lot of responsibility in life. And so you can live off little money with life age comes responsibilities and by the way other desire for other things as you mature maybe it's a wife maybe it's kids maybe it's home ownership all that sort of stuff uh or maybe it's something different but you want opportunity to do those things when they present themselves and so money gives you the freedom to have that opportunity and you have to make those decisions in advance unfortunately so he obviously got the college degree that was planning for the future maybe you start earning money to plan for that next future. So that's the only caveat. But I would say though, if you were happy in your town, in your small town, stuff I feel uh, comes from just sticking around. Like if you're there, you're gonna, you'll get, you know, it won't be, you won't be making Chicago money or wherever his big town <laughs> that he was gonna go, but you'll be making enough to, you know, unless I suppose there's the like, I see, but again, I don't know what is, I don't think there's a lot of Eastern seaboard or that's not true. I'm sure there's plenty of super high rent Eastern seaboard towns, oh, but yeah. if you're, if you're living in one, in one where, you know, you can afford a little piece of property, just grab a little piece of property. Like I know the people who are down here in Cardiff by the sea, I have a, one of daughter's buddies, uh, is third generation, I think, uh, where they basically owned half of Lucadia, right? And then they sold bunches off over time, but still everybody, you know, they have their property and nobody is rich, but they're all totally, they're set. They're not, you know, yeah. they're living. So if you were committed to this town in particular, I would say that that would be the real, uh, bit where it would turn. Like if you, if this town is fine for now, then I'd say maybe think about taking that taking higher pay. But if this is like, you're like, no, this is where I want to stay forever. I want to raise my family here. This is, this is paradise and stay. Um, I think one thing that you said at the very beginning is key, which is if you even, if you have your priorities right and you understand what you want, that's more than half the battle. So many other, so many people are chasing what other people want them to do. So their yep. parents paid for college and they want you to get the job. You feel obligated to honor that or society wants you to do that, right? And so, so many people, and then they realize many years down the road, sometimes with commitments of a 30 year mortgage or a marriage or whatever, and they're like, what am I even doing here? How did I get here? Letting the days go by. <laughs> so, I mean, um, but so what I think is key though is, um, if you actually have, if in addition to that, you have some sort of a talent and a direction, then you can make money with that talent and direction, regardless of what your college degree was. 
it's totally okay to not want to earn money and just to live in an apartment in the beach town and do your thing. That's fine by me. It's also totally okay to want to chase money. Sure. The, the ideal thing is to um, chase it on your own terms. And the worst thing that I've seen with my generation, and it's because of the socioeconomics of where we live in modern times, is giving up all of your own desires to go chase what ends up being a very mediocre paycheck and mediocre lifestyle. And when you're just out of college and maybe the number is 90,000 bucks and you're like, man, that's good pay. I'm only making 70,000 in the small town, you know, but I can make 90 and that's a significant percentage more. I'm going to go do that. But that means you're now living in a concrete jungle. You hate what you're doing. You're sitting in traffic, blah, 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 blah. It turns out 90 isn't that great. And then you, but, oh, I can get to the management position and make 120. Turns out 120 isn't that great. Turns out in that world, you're still, even if you buy a home, it's not the nicest home in the neighborhood. It's in a pre-planned suburb. You have a cinder block wall. You know what I mean? Like all of that stuff, you'll quickly realize it's double what you were making before. Double is not enough. It And then what you also end up finding is, what I've found when I look around now at this point in my life is like the people who actually are rich, they did not follow any of those rules. Yeah. They're the ones who went and did it on their own. And a lot of them never even got the college degree in the first place. They had some ingenuity, they had some hard work ethic, and they had talent, you know, and point at the highest level to Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Eric Elon Logan. Musk, <laughs> Eric Logan, <laughs> Jesse Miley Dyer. <laughs> um, all of it, you know, it's like, so do you want to just uh, slowly inch your way up the Bailey ladder from 90,000 <laughs> to 120,000? Or do you want to go, you know, live in the apartment, surf, doing the surfing lifestyle for 10 years, working on your idea that you end up making the 300,000 instead, you know what I mean? Just jump to that because you believe in what you know, what you want, which most people don't, and you're willing to do it. Like that would be the ideal scenario. Exactly. Like- I feel that, but again, him choosing what he chose, he chose exactly the right thing. Like he knew if he would have said I was too, I was too afraid to go, or I didn't think I would be good enough or something. then I'd say, well, drink a cup of concrete, my friend and harden up and go do what you want, you know, go grab it. But, uh, he's doing what he wants. Totally. And from, from every like real mover and shaker whose story you hear told either in a documentary or a podcast or whatever it is, they tell that exact story. They tell about when everybody around them was saying like, Hey, maybe you should consider taking the safer path. And they go, no, I I know exactly what I want out of life. And I'm going to do exactly what I want out of life that, you know, the people whose story is not being told are the ones who, yes say yes to what their parents wanted and their friends wanted and all that kind of stuff Amen. yeah so all right we solved it for you trust in us done and dusted yeah let's give a shout out again sunbum.com promo code surf splendor 15 percent off when i talked to sunbum by the way they said we don't care about online sunbum.com sales Absolutely. If your listeners want to save 15%, they should definitely do that, especially if you're stocking up on a bunch of things, but just go buy it from your local retailer. Like go buy it from your local surf shop, local surf shops, carry it, support the local surf shop. Next time you're in there picking up wax on your way to the beach, just grab some sun bomb along with it instead of a competing brand. That's, you know, that's what we want. Simple. Sunbum.com. 